In this lecture, you'll learn about deduplication, compression, and compaction. They're the on-tap space efficiency technologies that can help save physical space and reduce costs. Deduplication and compression are both space-saving techniques. They enable less physical space to be used than would normally be required. You can run them together or independently. So you could run just de duplication or you could run just compression, but typically where you've got either of them enabled, you will be running both of them at the same time. When both are enabled, compression runs before deduplication. So let's talk about how they work, starting with deduplication. Deduplication eliminates redundant duplicate blocks across a volume or aggregate. By saving only one instance, the first instance of a block, this space can be significantly reduced. For example, let's say that each department in a company has got their own folder in the same volume and they each store the same 10 megabyte spreadsheet in their own folder in that volume. Well, if there's 10 departments, 10 times 10 megabytes equals 100 megabytes of disk space being used to store that same 10 megabytes file. Deduplication, when we enable it, ensures that only one complete copy of each block is saved. Duplicate blocks are saved as references that point to the saved original copy, so only 10 megabyte space is used, but users still see their own files in their own folders. So let's see how it works. So let's say that it's that same example again, and the first department, a user there, they create a spreadsheet, which is called spreadsheet1.xls, and that is 20 blocks in size. And then they give a copy of it to somebody else in one of the other departments, and they save it in their folder in the same volume. Well, if we didn't have deduplication enabled, that would be two files, say a copy of the same file, spreadsheet one in the two different folders. Because we've got two copies of it now, that would now be using up 40 blocks. And then if we copied it again to another folder in the same volume for the other department, then that's another copy of the same file. Three times 20 blocks would be 60 blocks being used. And for our example, the user who's got the copy in the third folder, they make an edit to the file, they add some information, 10 blocks gets added, and you can now see that we've got the original 20 blocks times three, so that's 60 blocks, plus the extra 10 blocks in folder three, that adds up to a total of 70 blocks, taking up actual physical space on disk if we're not using duplicate deduplication. When, and you can see there that in the blue color, those are the identical blocks. If we do enable deduplication, then the duplicate copies of the same blocks are removed, they're replaced with pointers, and we just keep the first copy of those blocks. So now what happens is we've got one copy of those 20 duplicate blocks, plus the 10 blocks that were added, we have now got just 30 blocks on disk, rather than 70 blocks on disk. So we're taking up a lot less physical space, but everything still looks the same logically. Deduplication can be enabled at the volume level in FAS systems, and it can be enabled at the volume and also at the aggregate level in AFF systems. Volume level deduplication scans for duplicate blocks within the same volume. If you've got duplicate blocks that are in different volumes in the same aggregate or in different aggregates, deduplication will not occur. So on your FAST systems, volume level only is supported. For the deduplication to work, the blocks have to be in the same volume. But on FAS systems, we also support the aggregate level deduplication as well. That scans for duplicate blocks across all volumes in the same aggregate. So with AFF, you've got some extra flexibility there. With FAS systems, if you knew you were going to be storing some data, which had a lot of duplicate blocks in it, you would always want to have that in the same volume and enable deduplication on that volume to get the big amount of physical space savings. But in AFF, it can be in different volumes now in the same aggregate. 
Okay, so that was how deduplication works. Moving on to compression, the next technology. So on tap storage efficiency technologies work at the block level. So deduplication is at the block level, so is compression and compaction as well. Compression attempts to reduce the size of a file by removing redundant data within the file. Compression is enabled always at the volume level. By making files smaller, less disk space is consumed and more files can be stored on disk. So compression works in a different way, but it has the same effect as deduplication of saving space on physical storage. So with compression, for example, say you've got a 100 kilobyte text file, that might be compressed to 52 kilobytes by removing extra spaces, so blank space in the file, or replacing duplicate character strings with short representations, rather than having multiple copies of those longer strings. An algorithm recreates the original data when the file was read, so when it's going back in the other direction. And the more redundant data in a file, the more it can be compressed. Now, the way that compression works is with compression groups. Data compression combines multiple 4 kilobyte waffle blocks into compression groups for better performance. So rather than doing them one at a time, the system achieves better performance by grouping the blocks. Secondary data compression uses 32 kilobyte block groups and adaptive uses 8 kilobyte groups. Adaptive compression is preferred when there's a high number of random reads on the system and higher performance is required. Secondary compression is preferred when data is written sequentially and higher compression savings are required. So remember, adaptive is for the high performance. So because of that, when compression is enabled, AFF and flash pool aggregates, your high performance aggregates, use the adaptive compression by default. HDD aggregates use secondary compression by default. Okay, so that was deduplication and compression. The last technology is compaction. Small files or I.O., which is padded with zeros, are usually stored in a four kilobyte block, whether or not they require four kilobytes of physical storage. So you might have a file which is only one, two, or three kilobytes in size, but it's still gonna take up a four kilobyte block. Data compaction writes multiple small I.O. operations to one four kilobyte block on disk. So rather than giving them their each separate block, it can squeeze them into the same four kilobyte block. If you don't have compaction enabled, that's not gonna happen. Compaction is enabled at the volume level and it occurs inline during the consistency point. So when we're writing to disk, after inline compression and deduplication. I'll talk a lot more about inline and post-process and the difference between them in the next lecture. Volumes must be thin provisioned for compaction to be enabled, so it doesn't work on, thin, on thick provisioned volumes. So let's have a look and see how compression and compaction are going to work when we've got them enabled together. So this first example here, you can see that a client is writing logical blocks to volume A and volume B and volume C. It writes a eight kilobyte logical block, which is 50% compressible, and then another one the same, another one the same, that's going to volume A, and then a couple of logical 4K blocks, which are 55% compressible, going to volume B, and then three small one kilobyte blocks going to volume C. Well, if we do not have compression or compaction enabled, because Waffle uses four kilobyte blocks, that first 8K block is going to be written to two 4K blocks on disk. And we're not doing any compression here. We don't have that enabled. The second logical 8K block from the client will also be written to two 4K physical blocks on disk. The same with the third 8K block. The 4K blocks will each be written to a 4K block on disk. And then the three 1K blocks, they don't all get put into the same 4K block on disk. Because they're separate I.O. operations, they get written to three separate physical blocks on disk. So without compression enabled, if we add this all up, we can see that this is taking up 11 physical blocks on disk. Next, let's see what happens when we enable compression only. So we're gonna send the same writes from the client again. 
and the first logical 8k block is 50% compressible so we can compress that down to 4k and fit it onto a single physical 4k block then the next 8k logical block is 80% compressible so we can compress that down a little under 2k and fit that onto a single 4k block as well whereas before it was taking up the two 4k blocks because it was 8k uncompressed we do the same with the next logical 8k block as well and that goes on to the next 4k physical block and you can see these last two were both a little under 2k so we could actually fit them both into a single physical 4k block but they are two separate IO operations so because of that we're going to go into two separate physical blocks then we write the data for volume B 4k block is 55% compressible so that gets compressed down a little under 2k and goes on to the next physical 4k block the same happens with the next one as well again we could fit them both into the same physical block but they're two separate IO operations so they go into two separate blocks and then for volume C we have three times 1k logical blocks again it's three separate logical IO operations so that goes into three separate 4k blocks but because these purple logical blocks here for volume A, because we've compressed them down, we're able to fit them into three physical blocks rather than six physical blocks before we enabled compression. So you can see we've gone from 11 blocks down to eight blocks. So we're getting good space savings there by enabling compression. We can get even more though if we enable compaction as well. So let's see what happens when we also enable compaction. And what compaction does is it allows you to put multiple logical IO operations onto the same physical block. So now what happens is that first 8K logical block, which was 50% compressible, so we can compress that down to 4K, that goes on to a physical 4K block. The next two 8K logical blocks are 80% compressible, so we can compress them down to a little under 2K each, so now they can both fit onto the same 4K physical block because we've also got compaction as well as the compression enabled. Then for volume B, our two 4K blocks are 55% compressible. So again, they can be compressed down a little under 2K each. They can both fit into the same 4K physical block with compaction. And finally, we have the three 1K blocks for volume C because we've got compaction enabled the three of those can fit onto the same 4K physical block. So now when we've got compression and compaction enabled, we've gone from 11 blocks down to four blocks. So we're getting really good space savings there. Okay, so that was how deduplication, compression and compaction works and how they save physical space. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp Storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also, check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.